go right ahead. All right, well, first of all, uh, thanks so much for coming out here today. We certainly uh, appreciate the attention, and uh, it's a very exciting day. Uh, anytime uh, signing day comes and you add people to your uh, program, good players, good students, uh, and it's also the end of a very long process. Uh, it's a, it represents a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And, uh, you know, as the head coach, I get to come up here and show you the video and talk about all the players, but the, the people that do the, the bulk of the work is our assistant coaches who have logged endless hours on the road, a lot of uh, hotel stays, um, watched a ton of film, spent time in his players' homes and in their high schools and developed relationships with their families. And they certainly do the bulk of it. I want to thank uh, our administration here. Uh, we have a lot of people who really help with recruiting. Mark Shook, who's in compliance and student services, and he's got to be involved with every weekend. Uh, Clint Dowdle, our director of football operations. Aaron O'Reilly, our assistant director of football operations. Uh, our student assistants, Chris Sicaro, our video coordinator, uh, and, and numerous other people that do so much to help in this process. And also really want to thank so many members of our faculty and staff uh, that give up their weekends, uh, especially a, a big thanks uh, to Van Wright, uh, who's with our, our university's uh, admissions and public relations, just comes out every weekend and, and does a tremendous job of, of selling, selling Bowling Green, not just the football program, uh, but everything that Bowling Green has to offer from an alumni perspective and a student service perspective and does a tremendous job. Uh, also want to thank our current players. At the end of the day, people pick Bowling Green because they're comfortable uh, with our players and they want those guys to be our teammates and, and our players do a great job of hosting and, and so it's a, a whole team effort. Uh, we're excited about the 25 student athletes who uh, decide to attend Bowling Green and become part of the Falcon football family. Uh, it's a very large class, and we don't oversign. We don't sign a bigger class than we can handle, hoping that some guys won't make it. Uh, everybody that we sign, we expect to make it. Right now, they all project to make it. And, and there's two reasons why the class is so big. Number one, we just graduated uh, a very large senior class. Uh, the second reason is uh, there's been a lot of good news in terms of our APR, uh, that we had lost some scholarships a couple of years ago uh, because we had had a low APR. And uh, all of our numbers in that this upcoming spring right now project to be extremely high. That If it, it continues to track the way it is, that we'll be in great shape APR-wise. So we'll finally be back at full strength. So not only did we have a big senior class leave, but we get all those scholarships back and uh, we're, we're now where we want to be from that perspective. Um, a year ago, I talked about our approach to recruiting, is that we wanted to recruit the state of Bowling Green. Uh, at the time, you guys thought I was a little confused with my geography. Uh, again, the state of Bowling Green is the state of Ohio, the state of Michigan, and anywhere that's a, a five-hour drive from our campus. Uh, we feel there's a lot of great football in that area. And if you look at our recruiting list, 23 of the 25 players have come from within five hours. Uh, that would be 12 from the state of Ohio, uh, seven from the state of Michigan, three from Pennsylvania, one from Illinois, and one from West Virginia. Uh, and, and in that group, uh, again, is 23 of the 25 players that are, again, a quick drive to Bowling Green so their families can see them play, uh, that their high school teammates can see them play. And again, we just believe that any good football program has to first do a great job recruiting their backyard and, and because of all the hard work our assistant coaches put in, we've started to develop very good relationships within the state and I think that bears out with our recruiting list. Uh, we also said we'd extend ourselves to other areas uh, to get a position of need and uh, there were some in-state tight ends this year that we really liked and for, uh, for various reasons and sometimes some BCS schools came in. Uh, we really because of the direction we want to go offensively and, and play with more tight ends and that style of offense, uh, we extended ourselves to get two tight ends. Tyler Beck, who's from Reading, Pennsylvania, and uh, Kendall Montgomery, who's from Miami, Florida. Those are the only two players that we went outside the state of Bowling Green to get. And uh, when you watch their film, I think you'll understand why. Uh, just in terms of the evaluation process, it's really a four-step process for us. First of all, anybody that we recruit Number one, has to have the talent and the ability to help us win a MAC championship. If we don't think they can help us win a championship, we don't recruit them. 
Uh, secondly, we want to make sure that we recruit players who academically will qualify and, and certainly have the tools to graduate from Bowling Green. Um, like I said before, right now, you know, we believe this whole list will be here in August. You know, things can happen, uh, but right now, all of our projections are that we're going to go 25 for 25. Uh, certainly, the character aspect of things is very important to us. Uh, these are players, one of the reasons we believe recruiting in our backyard is that's who you get to know. That these guys come and, and they, they watch our games and they come to our camps. And we get to know them very well and we get to know their character. And there are sometimes guys we don't recruit because of character reasons. And, uh, you know, that's okay. Uh, we feel good about the group we have. And the other aspect that was really important to us is we feel it's important to develop leadership in our program. Uh, it's not an accident that 21 of the 25 players are high school captains. You know, that just didn't happen. That, uh, you know, we want to develop strong leadership in our program, and one of the ways of doing that is if we can recruit guys that were recognized as leaders in their high school. Uh, and certainly one way of doing that is if you're elected captain of your high school team, hopefully there's some good character strength and good leadership strengths that you're already bringing to the table, and hopefully we can do a great job of uh, developing that and enhancing that once they get here. So, again, we feel great about the class. You know, but the truth is, is that we'll know a lot more in three years. Um, you know, everybody, like, you know, today is the day that no coach loses. Everybody gets up there and says how great their class is. And, and a lot of times, from a media perspective, it's not followed up on and who actually shows up in August and who's actually there in two or three years. Um, you know, we'll find out how good this class is the next two to three years. We've got to get them all here in August once they get here. We've got to make sure we keep them here. We got to make sure we develop them academically. Uh, we develop them off the field, and certainly we develop them on the field. And if we do good, do a good job with that, you know, hopefully we'll feel even better about the class when it's 2011, 2012, and onward. So that's uh, kind of our approach. Uh, before I show the, the video, is there any questions that anybody has, um, or would you like to watch the video first, and we can go from there? You get, you can have four questions today. Four questions, yep. okay. <laughs> So, while we watch the video, when you're uh, we're done with it, um, you can ask some questions. Then we can get that going.